Okay, awesome. Welcome, 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 Closes University. We are here live for our second session of, well, I've given, I'm, I'm going to be giving um, the, the setters over here a new name, as I was, I was, I was just mentioning to them earlier. Uh, this is the Super Setters, Super Setters mastery so it's beginner to super setter so hopefully you guys and the ones that are seeing this on repeat as well you will be you will be taking you know a lot of copious notes what i am going to be doing as well is i'm going to be keeping an eye out in the comment section as well and every training i am going to be giving some sort of homework so i'm going to be paying close attention to not only who's paying attention on the call here live, but in the comment section on YouTube and who's actioning what I'm telling you to do. Now, on the on yesterday's call, there was a homework that I gave everybody to do, but I don't think everybody did that homework. There was only a couple of people. If that, I only saw one person uh, do it, uh, and I was quite surprised. I was quite surprised because I thought I was very clear. Uh, and it was including you guys on the call here as well and those that are watching it on the live stream and those that watched it on repeat as well. And it just goes to show, guys, that how many people actually, because I know as well, like how many people watch the whole video, watch the whole training and action it as well. It's very important, man. The, I, and you know, if you know anything about me, I, I pay very close attention to detail. I have very close attention to detail because it's, the, you know, they say, they say the devil's in the detail, but I I, I, call, I say the money is in the details. The money is in the details. So that's why, like, you really you really want to, um, you know, pay close attention. And let me tell you, repetition is the mother of learning. Repetition is the mother of learning. I don't get things right away. I need to listen to them at least a couple of times. So that's why I'm patient with a lot of you guys as well. Um, you know, when you don't get things right away. Or like I'm the I'm the worst when it comes to technology. So I know what it's like to put on a Zoom call and oh my god, like your mic's not working or this is not connected or that's not connected. I've been there and done that. Like as I was telling the guys earlier as well, I've got a pair of headsets. Like now, now I've got earpods as well and I've got the other ones, but I don't know. I, for some reason, I just like these. Uh, and for some reason, they're not connecting straight away. And uh, Walid was trying to explain to me, and I was like, okay, screw it, we'll do it later. Because I don't know, for me, uh, IT is uh, my, my weak points, but it's okay. I just learned the things that I need to know at the basics. But right now my mic's working because I'm using it from my computer. It's a very good uh, mic so far. And then I've got the webcam on there as well. So look, there's going to be things that you're not strong with, you're weak with or whatever. It's okay. But what do I, what do I say? Repetition is the mother of learning. So even these videos, this training right now, and the things that I'm going over as well. Maybe I've gone over it before, but I'm going to be going through in certain details and I'm going to be picking up certain people, you know, live. And, you know, and I want you to take this training, guys, like I'm actually coaching you live. So like actually picture me coaching you guys live. So if I'm, let's just say, for example, I'm going to be picking up Lily and I'm going to go through Lily's intro. And, and like you ask yourself, OK, imagine Jabran speaking to me now, whenever. And this was this was the trick that was taught to me many years ago when I first started and the, into the world of online, uh, making money online, et cetera, and whatever. And like personal development. And they said uh, they said, treat the speaker like and, and I always whenever I listen to any training on YouTube, whatever, I actually make myself believe that there's nobody else in the room. And that person on the video is talking directly to me. Like nobody else. They're talking directly to me. So I want you guys to be thinking, you know what? I'm talking directly to you. I am talking directly to you, Vanilla. Uh, and the training that I'm doing right now is directly to you, or Manjur Chaudhary, or uh, Anjan Sarkar. Though watch that; those of you that are watching it on um, and Hamza Wajid are on YouTube. 
But look, anyone, anyone that's looking to start into appointment setting, let me tell you, if you can communicate clearly, written and verbal, you can become an appointment setter. Like, you don't need no certification. You just need to go through the works. You just need to make sure you demonstrate that you can do this and you can do it with the utmost confidence. And, you know, whatever you don't, whatever you don't get in, you know, let's just say you're not that experienced uh, in appointment setting. No problem. Go through the reps. And it was something that I was uh, speaking to one of the guys on my one-on-ones today as well, you know, I was telling him, look, uh, like repetition is the mother of learning. And like everybody, and like this is, this is a theme that I want going across the whole of Closes University is doing role plays, <clears throat> getting on calls with one another and actually recreating a sales situation, recreating it. The more and more you do that, then eventually you've got really good at it. And, and I was giving the example of professional fighters, a professional, like let's just say professional boxers, when they go have their fight live. But that's their fight live, that they're fighting live. But in order to have that great performance, they need to have been in the gym. They need to have been doing their sparring because the sparring and the training is the closest to the fight. Now, in sparring, you know, they don't go at each other like full on and, you know, uh, like as if they were in the real fight. But sometimes they do. But sparring is the closest to real uh, a real fight, a real uh, boxing fight. So in, in our world, in the high ticket world, role plays are the closest things that you would get to a real sales call. So if you do this enough, now look. You'd rather, now look, I can paint you a scenario. Let's just say you're someone that, oh, you know what, role plays, they're just not real. And you know, all the excuses that people give and oh my God, they're hilarious, but they're just all excuses. People are just not willing to get uncomfortable. Or like, it's not real. I don't feel like it's real and it's this and it's that. That's all rubbish. Excuses only satisfy those that make them. You need to get used to being uncomfortable. Yeah, of course it's going to be uncomfortable, but your role plays, and that's why I don't mind. You know, on these trainings, these live trainings, you guys to buckle, to make mistakes, because this is where you're meant to make mistakes, because it's here where we correct the mistakes so you don't make the mistakes in the job. Because I'll give you an example. Let's just say you took a sales call and you could have, you could have made $2,000 on that phone call, but you made a mistake and you messed the whole call up. That person could have given you $2,000 in commissions, but because you weren't rehearsed, you weren't ready, you made some sort of mistake, that now, that now cost you $2,000. Would you not rather want to make that mistake in training and role plays? as opposed to in your in in real life because in in training is not going to really cost you maybe a bit of time or whatever but you're learning growing and developing and this is why guys it's so important i want people and look let me tell you the ones that are doing the most role plays that are getting on with each other maybe get on with a few people that are better than you or are a few steps behind you no problem you will learn from them. They will learn from you. It's get together with each other, get on as many role plays. I cannot stress this enough. If people like, and, and guys, with my VIPs, this is a must. It's a must. People, and like right now, I'm not referring anybody to the VIP from my VIPs right now. Nobody. Because we've had a bit of a break because it was Ramadan, et cetera, and whatever. There's, oh, when I say nobody, actually, there's a couple of people that I'm referring because I know they've been working and they're ready. They're ready to get placed. So I'm going to get them placed. Now, I don't promise anything. I don't guarantee anything. Can I get them placed? Of course I can. I've got the links. However, I'm not going to place someone that's not ready. It's going to make me look bad. It's going to make them look bad. And they're just not going to make no money. I'd rather they get make the mistakes here. So this is what this training is about, guys. It's about getting you guys ready. It's about going through the reps. You guys need to be going through the reps. You need to go th grow through all of this. So the first thing that let's just say, for example, let's just say 
I'm going to do a one-on-one -on -one with Lily. And let's just say I'm going to ask Lily. So first of all, I'd want to get to know, okay, like uh, Lily, if you, if you can just unmute yourself. Yep. And 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 because I, because I, I haven't done a lot, of, I I know that we've been on coaching calls, etc. and whatever. Um, but I want to treat this like let's just say I'm going to do a one on one with you. We're meeting for the first time. So Lily, um, and I'm your coach. I, I'm your coach, and now I'm getting you ready. You know, for appointment setting and get it, getting you ready to you know land the role and get better in the role. So I'll be like, okay, so Lily, currently, what are you doing? What are you doing for work? Currently, for work, uh, right now, not on the offer, left the offer and uh, applying for other uh, positions. And I have a few interviews scheduled this week. Very nice. Very good. So, so Lily, tell me a bit about your experience. My experience is uh, within last uh, two years, uh, I did... Uh, I dive into uh, various high ticket uh, uh, areas and uh, that was Airbnb, fitness, business, SaaS call calling offers where I generated around 500K in revenue. But my background is in the beauty industry and I am the past entrepreneur with uh, 10 years experience uh, steering my own business and as well working on the cruise ships as a spa manager and also a salon manager in Dubai. Oh, nice. So look, this is great. Now you can just be like, look, I've got, uh, so all together your work experience, probably three decades, you've worked as a, you've worked as, for a de over a decade, you've ran your own business. Yes. You've worked on cruise ships. So you've worked overseas, you've worked in management as well in Dubai. And now for the last couple of years, you've been involved in remote high ticket sales and you've generated well over $500,000 as an appointment setup. Is it correct? Yes, that's correct. Great. This is your pitch line there and then straight away, straight to the point. Someone that has over 30 years of experience in sales, uh, uh, entrepreneurship and management. I've run my own business for over a decade. I've worked on the cruise ship and I've worked in Dubai as a, a sale, did you say a manager? Sal salon manager, yeah. As a salon manager in, du in Dubai as well. So you could say uh, I have a knack for sales and people and meeting people and serving people and, and um, learning, growing, and developing, et cetera. We can get to later, but that's like a good pitch line. And then you can... Finish it off by like for the last couple of years, I've been remote. I've been involved in remote high ticket sales, mm -hmm. and I've generated over five hundred thousand dollars in revenue as an appointment seller. Good. Loved. Now, once you've done that, now Lily, I want you to tell me because look, this is guys. This is what they're going to be looking for. Because look, we've got their attention. We've got their attention there. Thirty years in sales, entrepreneurship, and running my own business. And then you've mentioned the few industries that she's worked in, overseas, etc. And then we've said for the last couple of years, though, because we don't want to go into too much detail, because people will get bored. But for the last couple of years, I've been involved in remote high ticket sales. What industries did you work in, Lily? This, this is where we can throw it in, like Airbnb, Airbnb, SaaS, fitness, fitness, SaaS cold calling, SaaS. Biz business, yeah. business coaching. Yeah. Well, there you go. So you mentioned that now for the last couple of years, Airbnb, fitness, SaaS, coaching, and I've generated over $500,000 in revenue. Around, yeah. yeah. And now, now we want to shift to, now if you have any proof, any stats, any data or anything, I've just, I, 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 and, and you can just present that as well. You can present that part of your one pager that I can show you. Uh, a matter of fact, uh, uh, remind me uh, uh, once I've done this part to share my screen and show you guys um, what uh, what I what I normally share people with uh, sh share with people. So so Lily, once you've done that, now guys, everybody, pay attention. This is what they're now looking for. They now want to hear, like, who is Lily? Like, what is she about? What is she about? And what can she do for us? In you telling them 
who you are, what you stand for, what you're able to do, is them now going to be like, okay, is this someone that we can, that, that we want to hire? And this is the important part. So now, Lily, I like, I want you to just, you don't need to, you say it as if like how you'll say it on an intro video, give me some of your qualities that I should and would get impressed by, that I would be looking for. I'm a person who likes to think out of the box. Uh, my personality type is a pioneer. I'm very curious and I'm, I like to challenge myself. And uh, I'm a go-getter and I'm competitive. I'm a team player. I'm supportive, helpful. Uh, I believe I'm friendly. <laughs> And I, I like to go for an extra mile, always, whenever possible. Um, I can say I'm generous. With the extra mile. Okay, perfect. Now, guys, maybe these qualities you guys actually embody. If you don't embody them... Now, Lily said multiple points. Now, it's all good saying this as well, guys. But now, guess what I want everybody to do? Go and study those points. Go and elaborate on those points and make them make sense to you and now connect them with you and your life and your experiences. So now when people ask you that, you really say it embodying it. You're embodying what you're talking about. And they can actually see it as in like, okay, so Lily, you said you think outside the box. What do you mean think outside the box? Well, I don't I don't accept the no as an answer. I accept no as a challenge. And I'm always trying to find the solution. I I could say that's something like natural for me. Mm. So give me, uh, so give me, give me one example when someone say when you're saying oh, I'm thinking outside the box. Thinking outside the box, how you can do some of the things uh, when there is a path. You know, people are going like an elephant path. You can go around and get to the goal. So there's Reach multiple goal. ways. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good answer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Competitive. You said you're competitive, Lily. Yeah. Uh, as a young in uh, in elementary school, high school, I achieved the second place with a steer. Is it the steer? You know, this one. The second thing, when I was in Dubai, even if I was a salon manager, uh, there was a third on a country level, third place for uh, Vela competition you know trade award for two 2012 there is an internet as well i can share so it was coloring and hairstyling you know so the third place bronze okay you be, you, you you came third place in a competition yeah which is a country competition a country competition from which country in dubai United in dubai. Arab. yeah when i was oh. in dubai when i was a salon manager so the vela uh, Vela Professional, which is the top brand for the hair stylist mm -hmm. for the hair products and color, they are uh, they were the sponsor and they were uh, organizing that uh, Vela comp uh, competition around the world in every country. So the first place goes to London, uh, London or Germany because they're a German uh, company. They're going to Germany for a world competition. Mm. So you can put so it, it, exactly so you can say look there was I don't know if it was hundreds or if it was thousands of people that uh, applied and contested and whatever and you know you, you fought very hard and you you came whatever so that's an example but you know what you want to do I need you to get to be able to explain this clearly I didn't get it first time round because you, you were going like I need you to be clear what the competition was like what it was where it was and what where uh -huh. I came. Dubai location year okay. 2012 Wella uh Wella 
country, you know, uh, United Arab Emirates, mm -hmm. uh, Vela Trade Color Competition. Okay. So there was a competition that I and Na what national uh, competition. National. A national. Com so a yes. national countrywide competition where you came third in the country. All Emirates, all Emirates oh, competitors, the whole of Emirates. not just Dubai, all Emirates, you so know. You, became, you came third in the whole third. of the Emirates. Boom, all of that's the Emirates. It, done. And then you said something about Spear. What, what was that Spear, one? Spear, that was like a junior. Uh, that was like I was 14 years old. And uh, it was also on the Republic because we had six republics in ex Yugoslavia. It was the Republic competition for juniors. It was the second place. Your competitive Throwing. nature comes from, and, and you know, your, your, your sporting activities or ventures that you do. Yes. And you can just mention some of them. Like how, like, let me give you an example of how I uh, give examples of like how I'm competitive. And maybe you guys can take uh, heed from this and give it in, because in, like maybe at school, you, you used to do things, you know, sporting activities, et cetera, or whatever. And like, you know, you were number one or you always... You know, because you were associated in maybe, I don't know, playing cricket or whatever, where my competitive nature comes from, my winning nature comes from, comes from boxing. Because in boxing, you either win or you lose. And I don't like losing. In boxing, and my competitive nature comes from boxing. I'm an English, British, and European medalist. Simple. My competitive nature comes from my uh, compete. You competing in I don't know the speed throwing or whatever it is. So you can just say that. Boom, done. Right. Another thing, I like to compete with myself. I always set my targets higher than it is requested. And uh, I remember when I was working on the cruise ships, there was a captain from Greece. He did the same. When we have the USPH, USPH, it is uh, the control that comes to check the hygiene level standards on the ship. He set the standards higher than the USPH expected. And we always pass the, that uh, inspection uh, with the highest possible uh, rates. I do the know. same. I, I do the same. And, th and this, is, this is a good example for you guys to learn and maybe look. Even if you don't embody these traits, guys, the fact that you guys are now listening to these, study them and make them part of your DNA. So, like Lily's just told you, there was an instructor that you know used to go around and used to mark people and whatever. There was so, like, let's just say this was what there was uh, expected, like across the board. He didn't go there. He he raised the bar so everybody goes there. So in raising the bar. Not everyone was only meeting this that was smashing the targets. Yes. So it's like us guys. Uh, you know, if if someone says they want us to make 300 dials a day, 300 dials to make to, to get, I don't know, 10 sales, 10 sales calls or whatever. So you'd be like, okay, I, I don't I like I want to make sure I get more than 10 dials, or I get my 10 dials. So look, because if you aim for 300 and you miss, you miss the target. Do you know the reason why most people don't reach their goals or reach their targets? It's not because they aim too high and miss. No. The reason why most people miss their targets and goals is not because they aim so high and like the goal is so high and they miss it. Do you know why? Why most people are just like, they never get to where they want to get to. And they're not really satisfied with their life and what they're earning and doing is because they aim too low and hit. I'll say it again. It's not because the reason why most people are not content with their life, their goals, their, you know, their situation, it's not because they aim too high and miss. It's because they aim too low and hit. And that's why. And this is something that I got from Grant Cardone about 10xing, just 10x. And, you know, thank God I was this was all like Grant's my market did this correctly as in like a nicely like 10x and everything. But I actually embodied the, the 10x, you know, from a very young age at school. We used to have grades A, B and C. Those were the passes. 
D E F G U were the failing ones, which I was a lot. Uh, I was amongst. Just so you know, I was. I failed my way through the education system. But then, when I, no worries. So, I used to make myself. I used to say to everyone, "Okay, look, aim for an A." If you and I never really aimed for an A up until the end of school and I got into sixth form college. I was like, you know what? For the first time in my life, I'm actually because I was just always aiming for C's. Even towards the end of my school, because I was labeled all sorts, because I used to be a class joker. And they used to say all sorts and whatever. And I was like, all right, no worries. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I just want to see. Cause I was happy with a C, because that was pass. But because I was aiming for C's, guess what? I did get a lot of C's, but some of them I missed by a couple of marks and I got a D. I never got what I was happy with because I was aiming too low. And for the first time in my life, guys, when I was in college, I was like, you know what? I'm doing a coursework. And I, and, and, and I was doing sociology with a lot of girls in the class. There was about two guys. Everybody else uh, was all females. But, but I think there was about three, four guys. And all, some of the guys were like hardcore anti-feminists. And, and this is why probably I'm a feminist as well. And like we used to always get into like um, debates and all sorts with the girls. And I remember, um, oh my God, this one time when, because I because obviously I was a class joker. I wasn't the brightest in the class. And no one was expecting me to get an A. And I remember some of the girls like uh, saying, oh, yeah, uh, it, it, it's an A. It's definitely not Jabrand. And that really hit me. Uh, and it was it was something like that anyway. But then then I was like, you know what? I'm I'm going to go for an A. I don't care. I And I, I I made sure I befriended all the A students, the girls, A students. They, they were my friends anyway, but I spent more time with them. I was And I was working with them very closely. And we were working on this coursework and everything. And when the results came back, for the first time in my life. Now, I was always getting fails. I was, majority of my uh, results were all fails. But for the first time in my life, I got an A when I was at sixth form. First time ever. And I remember the uh, some of the girls were like, Jabran got an A. Because they were so shocked. They were like, Jabran, huh? And I'm like, some of them didn't even get an A. They got a B. And so obviously there's A stars as well, but I was happy. I, I was going for an A. Like A star, okay, I'll be pushing it because I was a C-level student. I was, I, I was more than happy with a B or even a C, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for an A. And guess what? I hit it. And then look, through my university uh, years as well, I didn't really even go for a first class. I didn't. I was just coasting. But then towards the end of my degree, I was like, no way, man. I can't just take all these passes. Some of them were fails as well. I was like, I need to put my, I, I need to focus because I was doing a lot of things and I didn't really like education. I just enjoyed education because I just enjoyed having fun. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for a first class. I'm like, well, my last modules, I was like, I'm going to go for a first class here. And guess what? I got it. I got 77%. You needed 70% to get a first class first and I got 77% because I really went for it. I made the decision and I went for it. Some of us haven't made a decision yet. Some of us just have not made the decision yet. And because our friends and family members and relatives and people around us, their goals are like, you know, like very low. And, and because we haven't earned so much yet, our goals are just relatively around there. Your goals are not scaring you. And this is this is the first thing that I want to tell you guys as well, that you need to have goals that scare you. They need to scare you. Like, you know, when you look at them and you write them down, like you should be getting nervous. And 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 same thing happened to me when I was making my 20 grand a month goal years ago. But then then obviously it took me eight years to hit it. But then once I hit it, I crushed it. And I consistently went away above it. I nearly tripled it. And now, like just last year, a few months ago, when I was writing my goals down, because uh, I nearly came close to making 100 grand in a single month. Uh, I haven't made 100 grand in a month yet. Uh, I've made close to it. And I was making my goals. And I was like, you know what? It'll be good to make 100 grand consistently a month. 100 grand a month consistently. Because that's what my goal was with 20K a month. 
because it was so I, I made it like 20 grand a month consistently not just hit 20 grand and that's it oh yeah I made it no I want to do it consistently and I wanted to do it tens and times over now alhamdulillah I've been doing it since 2020 when when I was setting my goals of 100 grand no 2021 was when I hit my 20 20 grand a month goal I set the goal many years ago I got involved into high ticket sales in 2020 and and just just a few months ago, when I was writing down my goals, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna oh, let's go for a hundred grand a month. Like hundred grand a month, that's, that's a big goal because I've never hit it before. I've never hit it, but it wasn't moving me. It wasn't getting me excited. It wasn't making me nervous because I was like, ah, because I've been close to it. It's like this right now. You guys, you know, let's just say uh, vanilla, for example, like outside of high ticket vanilla. If you can unmute yourself. Outside of high ticket, just in your normal day-to-day -day job, what's the most you've earned? Like for me, was around about between uh, 1,800, no, not even 1,800, 1,600 to 2,500 pounds was what I was earning in a day job. That was for me, 1,600 to 2,500 in my day job. Uh, but that's in the UK. UK, you get paid relatively high or whatever. Uh, where are you based again, Vanilla? Uh, I'm from India. Okay, India. Perfect. Yes. How much money are you? How much money do you make in your like? Well, were you making average in your previous jobs? So I I have like a Amazon FBA set up in India, and I make around two thousand uh, dollars per month. Uh, so that's like uh, I'm just trying to like get into Sorry, something. Two thousand. Two thousand a month. So now, if you set a goal of, let's just say, making 3000 a month, that's not really going to excite you, is it? It's like, okay, yeah, it's 50% more. But, okay, 2500 If you try to just make, is that something that's going to make you nervous? As in like, oh, 2500 Because you already made 2000 It's not, or correct me, does it, does it get you, like, excited or scared or nervous or no? Uh, I would say uh, again, like it's it's the up and downs that I uh, go through that's uh, you know challenging for me. But I, what excites me about sales is making that on a call. You know, uh, it's very skill based. Yeah, so that's so what uh, exciting about it. In a yeah. Call. So let me let me change it then. What if you were to make so right now you're making two thousand dollars a month. What if you were able to make twenty thousand dollars in a month? Would that excite you? Definitely. Uh, that also would uh, put me in a situation that, uh, you know, that scares me. Definitely. Pushes me out of the comfort zone. Get you dreaming. Like, oh my God, I can do this for mom. I can do that for dad. My grandparents, my siblings, the poor people that I always see on the streets that I want to give money to, but mm, I'm thinking, oh, I need to pay for this and I need to pay for that. Now you can freely give it out. Do the, do, yeah. now it, that does that figure now get you dreaming and thinking bigger like of all the great things that you can do yes i think i've also seen uh, a couple of posts uh people from pakistan making uh, the money and that's life changing for them so yeah definitely this is what i want all of you guys to be thinking guys whatever your look whatever you know whatever income you've made look at pick the highest amount of money that you've ever made in a single month and times it by 10. Just pick it, whatever it is. If it's not a lot, make sure it's minimum. If it, okay, even if like you're in Pakistan or whatever, or, and like you've never really earned that much money, you've probably only earned like, I don't know, $1,000. Times it by 10. Or if you've only not even earned $1,000, you've only earned $200. Make sure your goal is minimum $10,000. Like if, like, uh, Mervish, for example. Mervish, if you could unmute yourself. I think Mervish is frozen. I thought Mervish was frozen. I know what, no worries. Well, look, imagine, imagine your, you know, uh, Mervish, okay. Uh, uh, Muhammad Bilal, what's the most amount of money you've made in a month? Around 500. Five hundred dollars. I also work in Amazon. Okay, you all you all work in Amazon. Maybe I'm gonna. Uh, I should launch my Amazon business as well. Actually, I've been doing lots of Amazon sales. I should I should launch it as well. Maybe we'll do something. 
Um, okay, $500. If you make, so that's the most you've made in a month, Bilal. Bilal, what if you made £5,000 in a month? Well, what would that do for you? That would change a lot. I can feed my whole of family with that. Oh, man. Bro, you you feed the whole village with £5,000, yeah? Yeah. And then, like, do you have any, like, you know, because I've been to Pakistan a lot as well, and, like, you know, you see a lot of poor people on the streets, or you see people, like, this is what I used to love doing. Uh, I used to love, love going to, you know, the street vendors that sell, like, I don't know, sweet corn, or they sell kebabs. I love kebabs. Or like anything, samosas or jalebis. Or I, oh my God, I used to love Pakistani and Desi food. So I used to love going out, and I used to love going to them. And and, and um, obviously I'd love going to them because I love food. But then I would, so I I would ask them, oh, can I have one samosa? How much does one samosa cost? They'll be like, oh, it's this much. Okay, how many are? Uh, and and then then what I'll do is, if I'm buying one, or I'll be like, how much are ten? How many, how much are 10 samosas? They'll be like, oh, they're like 300 rupees. Okay, great. So I'll get 500 rupees and I'll be like, here, here you go, here's for 10. And then I'll be like, oh, can I, can I just taste one right now? Okay, great. Sometimes, and I just used to leave them with the rest of the money. They'll be like, what? Like, yeah, that's for you. They're like, no, 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 yeah, that's for you. And I'll just walk off. And I, I like some. I am like, and I, I'd always look for the elderly people, the people like my granddad's age or my dad's age or whatever. And it's these little little things. Now, to me, I used to, you know, just spare thousands. Uh, you know, whenever I used to go on holiday or go abroad or whatever, I'd withdraw thousands of pounds. And this for me was like my zakat and my sadqa anyway. So I'd, 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 I'd put it out. As Muslims, we need to give charity anyway. But like, look, it's like, look. What I'm doing here with you guys right now, not a single one of you have paid me. Well, Yusuf's in my VIP. He has paid me to be in my VIP, but he's part of this anyway because he's just hungry and he was on time and he got let in. But only you guys were let in on this because you were all on time and you were punctual. And I thought I'll reward you. And I, and I wanted to pick some people that are outside of the UK that I want to help. But none of you guys have paid me. But I'm doing this for free. But you know why? Because I'm doing God's work. I'm doing God's work, like, because I'm tra I'm training you guys all together. Maybe I'll pick one of you guys out, and then I'm I'm doing individual work with you. But you guys can now see, okay, what is he doing over here? What is he doing with me? And maybe those of you that are watching it on record, uh, on recording later, you'll be like, okay, now let me put that into myself. Okay, so this is what I need to do, and that's what I need to do. And Jabran spoke to uh, Lily like this, and he told her to do this, and she said that she was a com she was competitive. How can I say I'm competitive? What can I find in my life that I can say I'm very competitive? Maybe you can say I've got three siblings and our ages are quite close together. And all, and I always like, even like growing up, because we used to have this with, between me and my siblings, but I didn't care because I didn't care about education. I didn't care that my siblings were getting better results than me. I didn't care because, but like some of you guys can say I was very competitive from, from my siblings. My friends, I, did, I didn't like that the fact that they were getting better grades than me. So I was very competitive like that. If I'm working in a team, I want to be the best member of the team. I want to get the best results. I want to be number one. I want to be number one because, you know, number two is second, is first loser. You, you give these examples. But guys, it's not only giving these examples. I need you to embody it. So like now I'm saying be competitive. Like who could give me like an example? Ask yourself, what examples can I give of being a competitive? How can I be a go-getter? Someone that goes the extra mile. Oh, they want you to make 10 phone calls. So like here, here's an example. If And you can give them an example. Oh, like how would you say that, you know, you're someone that goes the extra mile? I'm someone that does go the extra mile. If you tell me to go get you 10 sales, automatically I've registered in my brain, I need to get 15 sales. So even if I miss 15, I've got over your 10. So now I'm channeling everything to get 15 sales as opposed to 10. It's what you guys need to do and embody it within yourself. So that's just a bit about, you know, your introduction guys. Um,
The next thing that I want to, you, you know, uh, I, I want to focus on, like, like, Lily, do you have your one pager or anything at hand? If you want to share your screen and you you, you can show us that. Because, look, the next thing that I want to uh, uh, look at, guys, a matter of fact, but you just get that ready, Lily. I'm just going to share my screen because I want to show some things to the guys on the screen. Let me know if you can see my screen. Just put your thumbs up if you can see my screen. How are the, the live streamers doing? Who's watching us on live stream? Uh, we have Ismail and Muhammad Umar. Agree with you. Shoot for low. Keep us low. Yes, Bilal. Guys, those of you that are watching on YouTube, I'll be paying a close attention to you guys as well because I want to see who who. And, and maybe I'm going to be reaching out to some of you guys as well. And maybe out of you guys that are watching this on the recording, leave your detailed takeaways in the comments. Maybe on day three or day four, I may let extra people in on the live coaching just to reward some of you guys and the ones that do the homework as well. So make sure you watch the last, well, the first, uh, first call and the second call and you do the homework. If I see that you have, I will maybe pick in. Uh, um, Muhammad Bilal didn't get the link for today. Uh, we sent a message. Uh, no, Muhammad Bilal. Bilal, were you, uh, were you on the, the the Zoom call yesterday, Muhammad Bilal Raza? You were, weren't you? Yes, I think he was on the call. Okay, there's some someone saying, okay, anyways. Um, I'm just reading the comments on the, the, the YouTube live. But can you guys see can you guys can see my screen, right? Okay, cool. So this is this is uh one of the pieces of uh information. Or, or, or like marketing material, I call it, that I send to some clients. Not all the time, but it's 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 something that gives them a good insight into who I am. So look at the top. Jabran Khan, multi-seven-figure closer and head of sales. 25 years in sales. Now, of course, look, guys, not everyone's going to have the same experience as me. But at least you can get an idea of what I'm doing over here. And Because, like, look, if you read through all of this, I've given so many life examples of, of like, who I am. And, let, and I'll read it out to you. So, look, I have 25 years in sales selling products and services across a variety of industries. A student of the sales industry that has built numerous eight-figure businesses and closed a variety of diverse high-ticket packages ranging from 5k to $500,000. Consistently ranking as the number one closer for Kevin David and one of the leading closers for Rudy Mauer. Now check this out. Look at the way I've highlighted or I've made bold certain things. So look, the top line is all bold. Jabran Khan, that, that's what's getting their attention. I'm getting their attention right away. Because look guys, if you guys are not getting attention, you need to get the attention straight away, first of all, and then keep it. So look at how I get the attention straight away. And I need to update this as well, guys, because I've done way more than this as well. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm still like, I, it's not something that I constantly use. Multi seven-figure closer and head of sales. 25 years in sales. That's the first, first, first line, and it's in bold. 25 plus years in sales. Straight away, it showed them that, oh, this guy's some some experienced guy then now look at what i've highlighted as well more recently trained and developed sales teams for matt lapri ty lopez and shakia hussein that's what recently i've done well it was not recently it was last year a regional director for five years for one of the largest direct sales companies in the world where i was attracting recruiting and developing sales teams across all levels i come from a now look here look competitive I come from a very competitive background, being a licensed boxer and having competed in championships, both nationally and internationally. So you could say being competitive comes second nature to me. Look at how I've worded that. You could be like, oh, I, I, I train in boxing or I do yoga or I do this or I, I don't know, whatever you do. So you could say being competitive comes second nature to me. But guys, don't just say it, embody it. Be competitive. Start, if you're not competitive, start being competitive. 
A matter of fact, I'm going to give some, some people some tasks to do as well to see who wins the competition or who brings the best out of themselves. Like, I'll give you an example. In Ramadan, I made a challenge uh, with a group of um, kids that I was working with. And I said to them, who's up for a challenge? They didn't know what the challenge was. I was like, whoever's up for the challenge, let me know. And they, they were like, there was, there was about a good 15 of them that came up for the challenge. But the moment, and I told them, that I'm going to give them a, the, the winner's going to get a good surprise, a price. The, the top person, the winner. And then they, they were all excited. But the moment I announced the, the competition, only three people ran with it straight away in the, in the first couple of days. Four or five people, they got started, but they never got going. And the rest of them didn't even move. They didn't even move. And then I'm going to announce it later to them, like what the prize is for the first person. But they said they wanted it. They said they wanted a competition. They said they wanted to do it, but they never really, never really like got. But then towards the end, obviously, I encouraged them and everything and all of that. And, and, and they got going. But... And we had a chart as well. We had a we had a table and we were showing all like who's number one, who's number two, who's number three. Some some of them were really competitive. Some of the guys were really competitive. And some of them were just like, ah oh, meh, okay, whatever. And some were happy seeing their name with zero on the leaderboard every single day. Were happy. Those are not your competitive people. And that's what you need to be like. I'm not happy. So when you're speaking to people in interviews and they say to you, how much have you earned? Oh, the most I've earned is in like, let's just say Bilal, for example. Yeah, I've earned $500. But I'm not happy with it. I'm not satisfied with it. I want to earn $5,000 month after month after month. Now you're talking the language that they want to hear. So if you look, if you carry on reading, like, look, look at the insights I give, actually. I'm an English, British, and European medalist from 2008 to 2011. Now look, and look, some of these things, you guys have already got them part of yourself, but you're not marketing yourself with it. I am a student of the sales industry and award-winning sales trainers from the likes of, but not limited to, Grant Cardone, Dan Locke, Ryan Tracy. A matter of fact, there was Tom Hopkins in here as well. I don't even know why he's out. Uh, Jordan Belfort, D uh, Dale Carnegie, Alex Homozi, and Jeremy Miner, to mention a few. But one of the ones I studied when I was younger was uh, Tom Hopkins. Love the guy. He has this amazing training on YouTube that everybody needs to watch. Just type in Tom Hopkins and, oh, it was really good training. And then here, another one. Someone who is massive on personal development and is forever developing sales skills, methods, and expertise. How many of you guys are putting this on your um, on your resumes? How many of you guys are saying this in conversation? I'm someone that's massive on personal development and is forever developing his sales skills, methods, and expertise. Really study that line and embody it. It's look what look at what you guys are doing right now. You are personally developing yourselves. You guys are working on yourselves on developing your soul. You're investing time right now to become better. You make a note of it. Again, so I tell them, I'm not a massive reader, but the few that I have studied are the compound effect, think and grow rich, how to win friends and influence people, the 10X rule, and guess what? The expert secrets, which I've got right here. Again, now I'm telling them a bit about my education. Accredited. Now I'm not telling them about my GCSEs and my A levels, etc. I'm just mentioning my highest ones. I'm an accredited psychologist with a BA and postgraduate in psychology. So now they're thinking, oh, so he knows about human behavior. He he knows about he knows about that. Maybe he'll be oh, so he, he so I'm giving them all the reasons why I'd be a great asset on the team continually investing in myself. So here now, look, I'm telling them, continually investing in myself and in leaders that I could learn and grow from in the way of seminars, workshops, trainings, podcasts, and YouTube. 
So now look, here's where now I'm telling them a bit about, you know, myself in detail now. Willingness and desire to outwork anyone. Willingness and desire to outwork anyone and become the best version one could possibly be and continue to strive on improving myself and what I bring to the table. My reasons why are my parents, siblings, wider family, relatives, and all those less fortunate in the world. I can easily work 14 hour days, five to six days a week with a break every 90 days. Simply put, I love working because I love what I do. I love sales. I love helping people. I love money and I love making a difference. So look how I made the point and explained it as well at everything. I'm not just saying, because look, if you just get on a call and you say, oh, I just love, I just love making a difference. Well, you're not talking like the salesperson that they want. They want someone that loves money because sales is commission only. You need to tell them that you love making money. But you love making a difference as well. There was This was actually two pages, by the way, but I really condensed it. I actually go into a lot of more detail as well, but then I was like, it's too much. I'm someone that is highly driven, that knows exactly what he wants. And all my old goals seem too small for me right now. So I just continue on living by the philosophy of 10xing all my goals and going 10x in every area of my life. I love pushing my limits, challenging myself, making money, making a difference and breaking records. On that note, thank you very much for taking the time to read my profile. Hopefully, if nothing at all, you got some inspiration and knowledge from gaining a little insight into who I am. Many thanks. I look forward to hearing from you. Jabran. Now, I've got like an article that's written on me, but then here, call recordings and leaderboard snippets. So they can see where I was number one consistently and my call recordings. So guess what I've done? I've made the points here. I've given the explanation and now I've given the evidence as well. So I'm not just saying who I am. I'm explaining who I am and I'm giving evidence as well. Are you telling me they're not going to at least, if they're looking for a high ticket closer or a sales manager, they're not going to consider me. They're at least not going to have a look. Oh, okay. What's he doing? Let's see what, because I've given them all reasons to come and speak to me. And look, now some of you guys are probably going to say, but I don't do, I don't have, I've never worked in a role and I don't have any sales calls. Okay, no problem. No problem. But if you listen to what I'm telling you to do, go and do role plays and freaking record them. Record them. And now you can make a little short video of like three to four minutes of snippets of you saying certain lines, objection handling, opening the call. And maybe you've done it on 10 different calls and you took the best parts out of all of them and you put it into one. How's that? How's that now? Here's your introduction, so your intro video. And then now here, here's an example of me handling some objections, doing some appointment setting. Boom. As opposed to, now look, you may be, you may be a beginner. You may, this is why, this is why I tell you guys, I am so confident I will take any brand new person and make them into a super seller. I'm so confident. But you gotta be you gotta be coachable. You gotta bring it. You gotta you gotta put in the work as well. It's not just gonna be from me. Because let me tell you, there's people that I've worked with at the same time. Some of them have quit, some of them have gone to make 20, 30 grand a month. Same message, same work, different people, different work ethic. If you guys follow to the T, and look, you're only going to follow to the T if you listen to this again. Watch the recording again. Take notes. Upload your notes. Read your notes out again. And then watch the difference. Get on calls with one another. All of you guys, connect with each other in the comments, in the Facebook group. Okay, guys, we're doing a role play today. And the topic is, I don't know, introductions. Who wants to join? Drop a comment below. Connect with each other, share the Zoom link, and get going. Be public about this, that you're doing role plays. Show me and show many of my client friends that you're getting to work.
Is this all making sense so far, guys? So I hope what I've cleared about like, you know, giving yourself a good introduction of what to embody. Because I'm not going to cover introductions now. So introductions are done. The introductions are done. Now we we should be now looking at all of these things. As a matter of fact, I'll share that document with you guys as well so you can have a look at it. You now want to be okay, saying to yourself, okay, now what of these do I embody? What, what am I going to embody? Competitive. How can I be competitive? How can I be someone that's going to go above and beyond the call of duty? How can I? What am I going to do to be prepared for the opportunity before I have it? Then have the opportunity and not be prepared for it. So I'll give you an example. Let's put yourself in a real life example. There was a few setters that were all ready. They said they were ready and they done plenty of role plays and that was great. And they were actually good. They were actually good setters. But guess what? As soon as they landed a position, it was the first time they were ever using a CRM. And they had no clue. Like, go high level. Like, it was just stressing him out. He was like, oh, my God, I don't know how to use this. And I don't know what to do. And he was just getting so nervous. And then all of a sudden, his, his work rate dropped. Because that nerves was getting to him. And then lost the role. So what's that saying to everybody else? Let's learn from his mistakes. Let's go and find other setters and let's go on YouTube. Go on other setters and like go check. Say, oh, like, do you just go high level? Do you mind sharing your screen and just talking me through it? But go on YouTube. There's plenty of there's plenty of videos on go high level or you know, um clothes or like there's so many CRMs. Go and look at what CRMs most people are using. Maybe make a post and be like. Hey guys, just doing some data, just doing some research. Who you, what CRM do you use in your company or you've used? Go and do the market research. And now you've got, okay, Vanilla's used GHL. Oh, Wilma's used clothes. Oh, Lily's used aloe wear. Jabran, he doesn't have a clue. But now, now you can get these people and you can pick their brains. You can learn off them, learn with them. Go on, look, guys, anything you're ever stuck on, Anything you're ever stuck on, go on YouTube. Just put it in. Before it used to be like Google it now, but like Google and YouTube, they're both like intertwined anyway. Google it. YouTube it. Everything. Any questions so far, guys? Do, do. No questions. What happens when we come across someone as if you had a jabber in a group interview? <laughs> okay, cool. So, okay. So, guys, now we've... <laughs> what happens? Uh, matter of fact, uh, in answer to Ahmed Cisse's question, is like, what happens when we come across... Uh, like, oh, oh, my God. So, let's, actually, let's talk about group interview. Like, let's talk about... Because this is, this is a good topic. So, okay. So, uh, we're going to work, we're going to work on like, uh, Lily, we're going to look at your uh, uh, one page, et cetera, and whatever, we'll make some edits and, uh, and sorts. I've already showed you my one and I can show you others as well. But let's just say you're in a group interview, guys, because I want you guys to get ready for this part as well. And then, of course, look, we're going to get on to like, uh, you know, how to be good on the, ro uh, the role as well and everything. There's all steps behind everything. But remember, in order for you to land the role, you need to be able to market yourself correctly to get their attention first. You could be the greatest appointment setter, but if nobody knows you, you may as well be the rub most rubbish appointment setter because you're not going to be landing a role. If nobody knows, this is why attention is everything. Attention is everything. You need to be able to get attention. Do you think I was really good at marketing? No, I weren't. I studied marketing. I studied copywriting. I got the Russell Brunson books. I got the courses. And I became a good marketer, good with my words, good copywriter. Because I was like, I need to get good with not only selling verbally, but selling with my words, selling with my material, my videos, etc., and whatever. And I'm still, I'm still learning, still improving. Am I the best? Am I even a good marketer? No, I'm still learning. Am I a good sales pro? You could say that. I'm pretty good. Am I at a satisfactory level that I want to be at? 100% no. I don't think I ever will be because I'm just constantly, 
but I will give anyone a run for their money. Anyone. That's just my confidence in me. Like anyone, anyone and everyone. I don't care who it is. I will, like, because I know that if there's one thing that I can really work hard at, I, it, it, it's high ticket closing because I can make so much money. And, and, and I can, I'm good at negotiating. Uh, and if I can make thousands, if I can make thousands per call, and if I can make more money, honestly, I, 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 I reckon I would outwork anyone more than what I would do in boxing or in the gym or whatever. I don't know what it is. And I, I, I probably, this is one of my gifts that, that Allah has blessed me with. You guys need to find out what your gift is and work, just work on your gift. If you want, and let me tell you something about sales though, guys. Sales is a skill and art that anybody can learn. So even if you are the worst salesperson, you could still learn it and become great. Start off from uh, the art of communication, like communicating. Because look, sales is communication. It's a transfer of energy. It's about asking the right questions at the right time and giving the right solution. So you want to, so you want to believe and know that anything is possible. And I want you to know that. So look, let's just say, for example, um, group calls. And, and, and I've been on a couple of group calls where, oh my God, guys, if you guys like are, are listening right now and like you feel like you mess up in interviews, this is, an, and, and maybe this needs a separate training altogether, but let me just give you an insight into this. And like there's certain questions on interviews and before the interviews that they ask and the tripwire questions that 90% of people I see buckling on. I'll give you an example. Um, someone asks you, uh, what's one of your weaknesses? Now, naturally, people are like, yeah, okay, let me just let me just give them like my biggest and best weakness. And you know, half the times. We just want to answer the question and we just make up a weakness as well. We just, and you're not even knowing like, oh my God, like what am I doing? And half the times it's not even a weakness and you're just saying it because I need to sound good and I need to just give a weakness. And I remember I was on a sales call once and uh, not sales call, um, a group interview. And he asked the question, and and I luckily I was the last one. So I got to hear everybody's as well, but I, I knew what I was going to say anyway. And they were like, oh, I get stressed out a lot when I have a lot of work on my table. And, you know, if I'm not organized, I get, you know, I, I get stressed out. And, oh, my God, the worst answers ever. Like, oh, if 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 if, if I set my goals too high and, and I would miss them and it really bogs me down and uh, it this and, oh, I'm not good with this technology and I'm not good with that technology and I can't do this and I can't do that. Oh, my God. Just, just hear that, guys, for a minute. Some of you guys probably do this on uh, on interviews as well, but just hear it for a minute. Remember, an interview is your chance to sell yourself and sell them on hiring you. Imagine you're answering like this. Are you selling yourself on them hiring you or firing you before the job? Like, you want someone that's going to be a stress head, but you're telling them, oh, I'm going to be like this, and I'm going to, oh, my God. And then, uh, like, even, uh, so that was one. <laughs> uh, so when they asked me that, they were like, oh, so, like, what's one of your weaknesses? I was like, I don't have any. I'm bulletproof. Um, I, I'm just, I, I, he started laughing, and I was like, oh, I just, I just, I don't see anything as a weakness. Even if it's, if it's something that I'm lacking in, I'll work on it. But, you know, just to mention something, like, like IT is not my strongest part, but I can still handle it. I can log like I, I I'm not a genius in IT, but I can I can handle Zoom and I can handle the CRMs, etc. and whatever. So that may be my one of my weak points, but I can still but guess what I did though? I mentioned it, but I counted it as well. I said, but look, I can handle Zoom, I can handle CRMs, I can do the basic stuff. Anything of, of beyond that, I can't. I'd rather just if my if my laptop is not booting up and I need to reset it or whatever, I'll I'll either pay for someone to do it or I'll get a new laptop. I don't even put so much energy there as well. 
Or like, you know, if they say, oh, like, name me one of your weaknesses. I'm just so hard on myself. I'm so tough on myself. I'm very competitive and it's never enough. And maybe that can be classed as a weakness that I'm never satisfied. So look at, look at how I'm handling that. But that's me and I make it a part of myself and I embody it. Like, why do I want to be weak? Weak people don't get shit. Weak people don't get like, why? What do you want to be weak for? You, we have a choice to be weak or strong in the mind first. So why am I going to tell him, oh, yeah, this is why I'm weak and this is that why? No. Yeah, that I'm too competitive. If I set a target, yeah, good. I'll lose sleep. Be one of my weaknesses because I, I want to beat, I want to beat everybody. I don't like losing. Maybe that could be classed as one of my weaknesses. But let me tell you about one of my strengths. I will be the hardest worker in the room. I am willing to go above and beyond the call of duty. I am super coachable. I'm like a sponge. You tell me what to do and I will do it. I will do more than what you want me to do. That's, that's some of your strengths. And you want to mention them. So you never we know because look, a lot of people they buckle on these. They buckle on these two questions. And then and, and then they realize why they're not getting the jobs. Okay, cool. Um, uh, so that was that was, you know, like you know, in terms of interviews, etc., and whatever. Uh that you know, the, the the next thing that we're gonna be we're gonna be covering is so we've done we've done like the intro or whatever. Now, Lily, if you can share your screen. Let's have a look at, you know, a intro or a one pager or whatever. And like, let's get to work on that. There we go. Oh, look, this looks really nice, really colorful. Very good. Um, uh, maybe, maybe you could add to some of these, Lily, in, you know, making some of the words bolder. Like maybe uh -huh. add some bold. Okay, highlighting. Not yeah, highlighting, yeah, yeah. but bold, right? Okay. Oh, this is very good. I like this. Uh, where did you get inspiration from this? Canva. Uh... Oh, in terms of, was this Jellica? Did Jellica share hers with you? And Jellica and also in your WhatsApp group, some yeah. people were sharing uh, this. So, but I used Canva to yeah. make this. No, no, very yeah. good, very good. I would do this on Canva, and like you've got your photo there as well. Perfect, because this is. Pretty much literally what I uh, what I tell you guys to do as well. And it's look, and it's very good on the eye. It's all there in one page. Your LinkedIn's are there as well. Your name is fully there. So, okay, sales development representative. We want to remove that and we want to be directly what you want to be. If it, uh, you know, uh, so you're a sales professional. Huh? No, no, no. You are a high ticket appointment setter or you're an appointment setter. Appointment setter. Phone and DM. That's it. So you can put phone and DM, but you want to put appointment setup. Mm. But even SDR okay. is okay as well. Sales development representative, because I think that's what they call they call themselves as well. Like you can yeah, you, so triage, works. triage yeah. SDRs. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it works both ways actually. So no, you can leave sales, but I, uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, like if I was gonna be even more picky, I'd be like centralize it as well. But I'm just weird like that. Like your name and your sales development representative, put it in the middle of the, the top, like put it centralized as opposed to the left, just so it stands out, but you don't need to do that. Uh, experience in, and so, okay, here. Look, you know where you, you, you know where you've got experience in outbound and out, uh, inbound and outbound setting, cold calling, this is good to over two years, worked across the, you know, so what I would do is past entrepreneur with, so I would write down, 20, you know what we said about you? 20 plus years in sales and entrepreneurship. I want that to be the first thing. Remember, uh -huh. getting okay. their attention. We want to get their attention. And then trust me, you've got everything there that keeps attention. Oh, this looks a bit similar to mine. <laughs> I'm good. I want you to embody this. And I, I know you've embodied this because you've said it in certain words as well. Now you want to make this a part of your DNA. So this is this is a great example, by the way, guys. Uh, coached by Elite Closes. Have you taken these courses as well? Yeah, Tanner Gentry Chidester, right? I did, and then EPQ two O. I bought this, invested in this, oh, wow. invested in NLP practitioner and master certification as well. Yeah, within the last four years. 
Nice. Uh, versatile, strategic, flexible, entrepreneurial mindset, feedback and criticism. Feedback and criticism, I embrace. No, make sense over here. You know when you wrote feedback and criticism? Um, just, just be like, I embrace feedback and criticism for a tool of growth. Make that make sense. Aha, uh -huh. just turn around. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Someone who goes that extra mile when it's needed most. But then... You know, with this one, someone who goes that extra mile when it's needed most. No, you want to be like, I go the extra mile all the time. Uh -huh. Someone that go, that always goes the extra mile. But then you want to be that person that always goes the extra mile. Because those that go the extra mile are the ones that stand out from the crowd as well. Okay. Self-motivated, driven, competitive. But a massive team player, but a team player also. Competitive. Or you can just be like self-motivated, driven, competitive, team player. Mm -hmm. Strong empathy and passion for helping people, personal development. Okay, yeah, everything on my motto, get the knowledge from people who have it to the people. Wow, nice. Very good. Uh, and works across various niches. That's very good. Put them, put them in bold. Airbnb, fitness, business, SaaS, 400K in revenue. Highlight set 42 meetings. Very good. Put highlight in bold and all of that. 42 meetings amongst three Instagram setters that turned into seven deals, close 70 gain revenue. Put that, boom. Okay, this is good. Uh, you can you can stop sharing now. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. I'll, okay. I'll do that. okay, good. Yeah, very good. So that's what I want people, guys. Lily, maybe share that with the guys as well. Yeah, I, yeah, I will. People to work on their inter their, their one pager like that. Go on Canva, put your photo there, put these qualities about you. This is what I want you guys to do. And and, and what I want as a homework for everybody, which I did say yesterday, but nobody did. I want you to watch my intro video, my intro video, the two and a half minute intro video that's on YouTube. You watch that and I want you to put your intro in writing under there. In writing. In writing. Under okay, there. Good. And then, I what Lily has done on her Canva, she's going to make the edits as well. You go on Canva and maybe link up with Lily and maybe if you want her to show you what you did, go and, and get yours on Canva. Because that's very good. It's, it's not boring like a resume as well. It reads good. But don't just copy hers word for word. Be creative with the words and make them part of yourself. Make them part of your DNA. But look, guys, on that note, it's been a great session. Uh, Vanella, did you have a question? So I just wanted to know if somebody is uh, like very young and has uh, less experience. So how would you want us to like play uh, our strengths? You like, make life experiences. Yeah. You make certain life experiences. You know how a bit like I did with boxing, how I'm a massive learner. I've read these books. I've learned from these sales trainers. You talk about that? Mm -hmm. So my resume, oh. if you look at my resume, that one page there, I not only talk about, I talk about my experiences, but then I also talk about my life experiences, about certain books I've read, mm -hmm. certain mentors that I've learned from, and then I talk about my qualities. And maybe if you don't have that much, but you, Vanilla, you've got entrepreneurship experience and Amazon, running your own Amazon business, boom, done. Yes. Bilal has as well. Wilma has corporate experience. So you want to talk about these things. Okay. okay? So so first our uh, previous experience and then uh, the uh, relative experience in sales. God. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And look, some people are not going to have that much experience. Some people are going to be young. They're like, they just finished school. So you mentioned, I'm a, uh, like, um, however old you are. Yes, Lily? I have a suggestion as well. Use ChatGPT to help you. And also when you are recording a loom, you know, the loom will give you a suggestion uh, and correction how it will it would be a little bit better, you know, to put all these things together, to formulate the phrasing this together. So I don't know if you know that. For inspiration, I need this to be as authentic as possible. Like, uh, I don't want you guys chat GBTing everything. No, I want this to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want you to get inspiration from chat GPT. Okay, that's fine. But then you need to embody it as well. Maybe ask chat GPT, what makes a great salesperson? 
What are the qualities of a great salesperson? And now when they give you those qualities, go and research them. Go and study them. And now put them into action in your life and embody them in your life. And that's how you become great. Because repetition is the mother of learning. But on that note, guys, it's been a great session. You've been great. You've got your homework. Do your homework. Make sure you get your one pager done. And then we'll move on to the next step. And then we're gonna be we're gonna get onto the juicy stuff as well. But this is good because now we're gonna be getting you to be marketed right, get attention. Then we'll keep the attention, and then we'll land the roles, and then we'll be good in the roles. Oh great! Okay, guys, all the best, and I'll see you tomorrow.